Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special establishes one big new rule for the MCU as we look ahead to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. No matter how much Peter Quill misses Gamora, he should not, definitely not, rebound with Mantis. And this video is sponsored by Rage Shadow Legends, we'll give you some more info on them in a moment. As many of us speculated after Guardians Volume 2, Mantis is a half-sibling to Peter Quill, both of them children of Ego. Since Ego is technically a Celestial in the MCU, on the same power tier as Celestials like Erishim and Tiamat from the Eternals, this confirmation may also change the balance of power, but really brings up deeper questions about these characters' genetic histories. I'm gonna break down this ancestry to find out who's been smooching who and why none of them have been me. In the Guardians Holiday Special, we learn for sure that Peter Quill and Mantis are both children of Ego. Mantis initially shares this secret with Drax. Because of, you know, my secret. The one only you know. That you're Quill's sister? And in the final scene, finally shares this with Peter Quill, who accepts it. Your father, Peter. He might be. Ego? He might be what? He is my father, too. Wait, so does that make you my sister? That's the greatest Christmas gift I could ever get. <laughs> And yes, this confirms what many of us speculated since Guardians Volume 2 that Mantis was another one of the unlucky offspring of the countless mates that Ego hooked up with, trying to breed a child who would carry his celestial genes. And when his tableau shows the dozens of smooches, one of those mates on the far left is the same species as Mantis, implying this must have been Mantis's mother, and Mantis is Peter's half-sister. Now, when I'm not inhaling movies and TV shows, I love exploring new worlds and collecting every last thing there is to find. And when I'm out and about, the best way to do that is with Raid Shadow Legends! With over 600 channels, Champions to collect and upgrade, endless artifacts to find, and billions of different teams to try out. Raid Shadow Legends has years of content. Let's open some shards to get some new champions. I got a Bogoth from a sacred shard. He's a great support champion that will be helpful in Hydra and dungeon battles. Not as much luck with my ancient shards. Those are all rare champs that I'm gonna sacrifice to level up with better champs like Bogoth. And I also got a Blood Braid, who, nothing personal, I'm also gonna sacrifice because I'm going all in on Bogoth. This month is huge for Raid. They just released a brand new faction, the Sylvan Watchers, with some amazing new champions forest elves, ants, druids, fays. The vibe is very Rivendell. Raid's also got a full lineup of events along with the new season of the Forge Pass where you can get your hands on some of the most powerful gear the game has ever seen. And if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can get your exclusive rewards in Raid right now. And if you click the link in the description or scan the QR code here on screen, you get unique bonuses worth $30. A free champion, Rector Draft, 200,000 silver, one energy refill, and one XP boost, and one ancient shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. All of this treasure will be waiting for you right here. <gasps> Treasure! Nom, 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 nom. Now, sometime after Volume 2 came out, a social media post from actress Jennifer Sharp began to recirculate in which Sharp posted a photo of herself on set for Guardians Volume 2 with a since-deleted caption claiming she shot the scene as Mantis's mom with Kurt Russell, but the scene got removed from the film. James Gunn at that time responded with another photo of Sharp with Kurt Russell, but at the time he downplayed any familial connection between Peter Quill and Mantis and said that fans, quote, don't necessarily need to infer anything else from this information. Now, all this is coming from articles that came out at the time citing Gunn's tweets and replies and likes on other fans' tweets to him. But now that the Guardians holiday special has come out, it now looks like Gunn was definitely playing coy when he was denying Peter and Mantis's connection. And this scene with Ego and Mantis's mom was truly part of Gunn's conception for Mantis's origin. Ego killed all the other offspring and piled up their corpses on a cavern on his planetary body, but he kept Mantis alive because she has the ability to sense emotions and relax someone into a dormant state. Ego used her to ease his mind during his search. But I mostly use it to help my master sleep. He lies awake at night thinking about his progeny. Now, at first glance, it would seem that Mantis joining Peter as a fellow offspring of a celestial is a huge deal. His response that them being related is the greatest Christmas gift anyone could get might be his way of saying, well, great, now we got another celestial kid to help take down these that could also explain why Peter Quill was so eager to set up shop in Nowhere and buy it from the Collector, because Nowhere is a severed head of a Celestial formerly used to mine Celestial brain matter. Peter could want to study the inner workings of a Celestial, so he better knows how to pop open one of these skulls and battle in the future. But not so fast. While Mantis is the child of a Celestial, Ego made a point in Volume 2 that none of his offsprings, except for Peter Quill, carried the Celestial genes. One after the other, they failed me. Not one of them carried the Celestial genes. Until you, Peter. Out of all my spawn, only you carried the connection to the 
light. So Peter Quill was unique in carrying the celestial genes. Mantis did not carry them. If she did, Ego's search would have ended way earlier and he'd have no need for Peter Quill to fuel his expansion because he would have Mantis to do it. Ego only kept Mantis around to keep him company and to help ease his mind, which is a pretty cruel role for her and an essential function for him. Basically, he needed her to offload all of his guilt through her empath powers. She had to carry around all of his guilt for him so that he didn't have to. So this would suggest that whatever made Peter Quill unique to carry Ego's celestial gene, whereas all of his other half-siblings couldn't, that quality actually came from his mother, Meredith Quill. And Meredith Quill, remember, is certainly at the heart of the mystery Easter egg that James Gunn has said isn't fully found, even if videos like ours have gotten close. The recent season of She-Hulk brought up that question of who Captain America Steve Rogers lost his virginity to, and the best answer we came up with was that fangirl, played by Laura Haddock, the same actress who plays Meredith Quill in the Guardians movies, implying that Captain America might be related to Peter Quill. This fangirl was the one woman Steve clearly had a connection with, a camera bulb flashing on them, giving photographic evidence of this encounter so that others in the future, like Bruce Banner, would be able to confirm this independently and that Warbond's tour stop was in Chicago, the closest on the tour to the Quill family homeland in Missouri. So I think there's enough to speculate here that this woman could have been related to Peter Quill, maybe his grandmother or great-grandmother really, because Meredith Quill would have been born in the late 50s, so this fangirl would have to bear a kid who then had another kid, who then as a teenager would have another kid. We gotta sandwich the generations here to make this work. James Gunn was asked about this theory in the past and he has gone from jokingly confirming it to as recently as this August, tweeting that the timeline makes it tough, but he did respond, sure, why not, to whether this band girl could be Peter Quill's great aunt. And sure, why not, is a lot more than that flat out denial that Mantis and Peter Quill were related. I think this starts to explain the recurring confusion over how mutants work in the MCU exactly. Black Panther Wakanda Forever formally declared Namor as a mutant, but didn't really explain what made him a mutant or how that connects him with others of mutant kind, like Kamala Khan. Namor was born to a woman who was pregnant when she consumed the Yucatan variant heart-shaped herb, and he was born underwater with winged feet, pointed ears, and the ability to breathe both underwater and on land through skin diffusion. All of this was a unique side effect for Namor. No other Talakanil can do everything he can. So was it because of side effects while he was in utero? Probably not. Namor's mom was pretty far along at that point. So whatever that baby was gonna be was already in his DNA. I'll admit I'm not an OBGYN, they won't let me. But I don't think the MCU is about to say, if shit happens to you when you're pregnant, your baby comes out a mutant. We need less confusion around the pregnancy process right now, not more, okay? And to that end, let's hope Blade's origin story doesn't come from his mom being bitten by a vampire when she was pregnant. Marvel Studios, you aren't allowed to change that. Rather, people are mutants because they have a genetic predisposition, an X gene, something they are conceived with, so that when life events like puberty or external exposures occur, things that happen to everyone, for mutants, it activates other things in their DNA. For Namor, that baby always had the X gene from the moment of conception, but then after that, while he was a fetus, when his mother drank that potion, that activated the mutant gene that was already in his blood, while he was still in the womb so that he came out the way that he did. Now, what does all this have to do with Peter Quill and Mantis? Well, something about Peter's genetics from his mother made him uniquely capable of handling the celestial genes and surviving things like the Infinity Stone radiation. And according to Ereshim in Eternals, Ereshim deliberately designed Eternals as sterile synthesoids who could never bear children, making them in his own image. Celestials do not procreate sexually. They have one and only one procreation process, implanting celestial seeds in planets. Ego, as a celestial, tried to find a loophole to that rule and it did not work until Peter Quill. So by that logic, Peter Quill must be a deviation or a mutation to the Celestial's divine plan. So is Peter Quill a mutant in the MCU? I don't know, but we are about to learn a lot more about his genetics and this Guardians Holiday Special established this key relationship with his half-sister Mantis to help him explore that connection. Let me know your thoughts down below. You can follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.